It's flag day, everybody. Hope you got your flags out. Now that we've got the big bore 240 piston in here, the larger cam, larger intake valve, larger carburetor, I thought it was time to really get this thing dialed in to get the maximum amount of power out of this thing. So especially with this carburetor, I've had a little bit of trouble tuning this thing. So I thought, what better way to tune it than actually have an air fuel gauge that I can actually see and put on an O2 sensor and... Whoa, hang on just a second. Let me back up. Why would you want to put an air fuel gauge on your bike? What it's going to do is allow you to do your jetting while you ride the bike. Instead of the seat of the pants feeling... The days are long gone when you can read your spark plug to see if the thing's running lean or not with today's modern fuels. So really the only way to get very accurate jetting is by going with an air fuel gauge. And as we already know, running too lean is going to overheat the engine with possible damage resulting. Too rich is going to gum things up with carbon and soot and lack of power. If we get it just right, we get the most power out of the engine while keeping the engine relatively cool. Now I got this from Glow Shift because it was one of the least expensive on the market. No particular reason really other than that. The unit comes complete with a wiring harness to plug into the actual sensor and the kit does come with a quality Bosch sensor. The wiring to go from the gauge to your wiring harness. A uh, faceplate if you want to have a different color faceplate. The bung for putting the sensor into your exhaust and some connectors and some various mounting pieces which are zip ties. So without any further explanation, let's get started. So anyway, that's the gauge and uh, this is from Glow Shift. And no, they're not sponsoring me. I get no sponsorship from anybody, by the way, nothing. There's actually only two different places this thing can go. This is kind of your typical setup here. I thought maybe right here was actually a viable spot and then so I could have the wire feed up through here like that and really get it tucked out of the way but too much heat going to that boot melt melting that about so much too much heat transfer and the mount down here this is too much going on down here so this is really the only viable place is really right here in between and I know it really is close to the cylinder we don't want a lot of heat but it keeps it out of the way so you're not hitting it with your leg and so that's what we're gonna do by the way you have to be very careful with these do not bang these you're not even supposed to touch it so I just keep until I'm ready to actually mount the thing the plastic cap stays on it um, they give you this in the kit which is a nice bung mount but that, and I'll show you, it's going to stick down too far. So I'm going with the taller one. We're going to go right here. And so we're just going to mark around here. Like so. And there we have it. By the way, this is a BBR pipe, so yours may be different. Um, and I think a lot of people have these, so but your pipe could be different. I don't know about uh, putting it on a stock one, so disclaimer. Okay, so there we have our bunk. Excellent, excellent, really nice weld job. Really impressive. Okay, so the idea here is our sensor, which we don't want to touch the end of this, right? The Bosch sensor sits right there. Just the tip is protruding into the pipe. We don't want that thing stuck and blocking the pipe, right? Okay, so you can kind of see I had to go with the taller bung. 
So we've got our Bosch sensor welded in and placed in. The wire not touching anything here. And I measured here and it's 16 inches. So not quite enough, but I, 18 inches is right here. That's not gonna work as the carburetor. We thought of putting it here. It routes up underneath the tank. My connectors are here. I decided to take the tank back off for you guys so you could see uh, how this thing was routed. So, uh, routed up. There's uh, my nice aluminum motor mount, courtesy John Nagelson. Yeah. Thank you, John. And as you can see, it goes up and then it just joins in with the rest of the wiring. There's the connector right there. And I just put it right on top. My CDI box, there's my CDI box moved because we put the mount here. We use that mount as you remember. Okay, and it all, it's pretty tidy. I mean, it's a little, it's getting a little messy in there. And I may put some heat shielding around this. I'm not sure, because there is a lot of heat in this area. I haven't had any trouble yet with the CDI box being there, but we'll see. Anyway, so then following up here, these are the wires here going up to now this is temporary here i'm going to do some really nice uh some super fancy black zip ties Woo. uh but anyway the main thing is this thing's secure and it's so oh my god are you uh, my tank just fell off onto the floor okay well good thing i turned the gas off anyway Here's the other side, not so clean. Everything's kind of, it's really tight in there with everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so while I'm here, I'm going to talk about this. Now, this, we had issues. Now, you notice it's different now. We've gone with a steel piece. Kind of ugly now because I haven't painted it yet. But, uh, as you can see, it's very solid. I took it over to Mr. Smokey, and he actually tack welded it here on both sides. And so, as you know, this bolt here sheared off. Despite it being a grade eight bolt, it sheared off. And boom, all of a sudden, I think we found the mystery to the crash. Now I can show you this in slow motion and I believe what happened is in this crap I had previously broke the old mount and so it allowed the front wheel to swing over it knifed into the turn and I went over the handlebars that's my excuse anyway okay so here we are in wiring world and we're just stripping these. These are the only wires that really need to be stripped and connected. First, I had to shorten it because they give you, they give you more than enough wire, <laughs> plenty. In fact, this is what I cut off. You don't need that much, but they give you plenty of spare wire just in case. So now we're gonna connect this leading up to the actual gauge. And this is also coming out of the gauge and that will go into power. So really not that complicated, it's not that bad. And so I just powered into my switch. I switched my little knobs broken, but I can still, it's still, I had to fix it, it's still working. And so now when I flick it on, doom, power. So you cannot run leaded fuel it will foul out the sensor permanently, you'll ruin it. And so I was running VP uh, U4.4, which is awesome oxygenated fuel, but it's leaded. And so I had, I'm had i gonna have to go to an alternative fuel, uh, unleaded. So we'll, we'll just deal with that, but that's okay. Uh, so it's done. Woo, man, it's about 100 degrees in here, at least. Okay, so we do have the air fuel gauge finally mounted on here. And as you can see, it's, uh, you know, I managed to change the zip ties from white to black, but uh, you know, it does work. 
and it is mounted and you can see it and uh it's you know i don't know what to say i went ahead and wrapped this with fiberglass to keep a little bit of the heat out of this area uh so i think it's gonna work out anyway nice welding job by mr Smokey. thank you let's give it a shot and i'll see you what if we can even read this thing at all we'll see So, after making friends with my neighbors, <laughs> uh, I'm sure they really appreciate this, uh, we got an idea, and uh, we'll take it out, we're going to take it out on the dirt now and see how it does. Here we are at the usual spot, try to get a little bit more accurate jetting on this thing, and hopefully coax a little bit more power with nice, evenly jetted all the way across the RPM range. That's the idea. So. Whether you'll be able to see this thing actually working while I'm <laughs> riding in the dirt, we'll see. Gauge on, and then it's running off the battery. So you have to make sure, I, and I hooked it up here to my switch. It's kind of Mickey Mouse, but hey, it works. It's very solid. Now, if you're, if, you're, if you're thinking about me hitting my chest on here, I normally wear a chest protector at all times, when I'm, when, especially when I race, always. And so, um, you know, if I had the chest protector, yeah, I might smash the gauge and ruin it, but I'm not going to punch a hole in my chest. So, um, having it mounted here, uh, without a chest protector, probably not a good idea. I would have it off to the side over here and I may move it over here. This might be a better area instead of right on the crossbar pad, but I wanted it here because this pad, um, absorbs a lot of shock a lot of shock and it's mounted in this pad so i thought well it's a better way to keep the thing from getting ruined from uh just the shock of riding it takes a minute for it to engage so it'll always start out at 14.1 until it starts reading correctly okay now it's reading correctly so i'm idling at about 12 pretty rich but that's just idling so we'll see So after spending quite a few hours with this thing, um, I think I've got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. What I believe is happening is the actual sensor is uh, getting, ow, I just burned my finger hot. Uh, I think it gets hot and it begins to malfunction. I think I'm getting overheating. I don't know. I, I'm just guessing. As you can see, I'm getting some kind of haywire readings now. I know it's not running this lean. It, it didn't change the jetting. So as you can see, it's just pinned all the way lean. So that can't, it's not possible. So if I rev it up. Now it seems to go back to normal somewhat. But if I let it idle down, well, now it's not doing it say because of the high compression now 11 to 1 versus the stock 8 to 1 I have to run a very high octane fuel or uh, the or the octane booster one of the two as, you, as I said before you cannot run leaded fuel or else it'll mess up this sensor so um, I just had to run some regular 91 gas I didn't have any VP race fuel so I put a little bit of octane booster in the tank 
some VP Octane Booster, not thinking, oh, that could possibly foul the sensor. So, something to think about. Uh, oh, and by the way, it did survive the crash test, as you can see. I did hit the ground and uh, little got a little scuffies here, but the unit survived. No, it didn't even, well, maybe a little scratch on it, but it survived the crash and uh, yeah, all good. Do I recommend this glow shift, this setup? It was great. I was able to tune the carburetor. I really was able to dial it in quite a bit. It was, but now it seems to have stopped working correctly. It's, uh, it's going haywire. I think, um, I don't know if it can't take the shock, uh, the, the unit itself, or if the, um, the sensor is uh, overheating. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna have to talk to GlowShift and ask them some questions. So right now, do I recommend this? Mm, hard call. I got my jetting dialed in. Was that worth a hundred bucks? I saved a lot of time with my jetting. I had some issues going on because the jetting down low was super lean. Uh, main jet was super rich. The mid range was, it had a, it had a really bad stumble and I was able to correct that. So that's good. I'm gonna clean the lens here. So yeah, I was able to really dial in the jetting, but now that I'm having this problem where it's not, it doesn't seem to be reading correctly anymore. I'm wondering is, is the unit itself able to take the shock of, of being mounted where it is? Another problem I ran into was glare, was actual glare on the glass. And so I put some, I tried putting some visors on it like this and that seemed to help a little bit, but it wasn't very practical. Uh, so yeah, overall, I made it a hard call. Would I would I do this again? I don't know. Really don't know. Uh, that's gotta be your call. Pretty hard to do when you're riding. <laughs> it really is. It's really hard to Hopefully you got something out of this. I don't know if you wanna try doing this yourself. It's pretty difficult to uh <laughs> Pretty difficult to hold it still while you're riding. Let me tell you, pretty difficult. <laughs> <laughs>